Hi there, this is James Swanick, and you're listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn how to take back control over alcohol and live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. How do you be the only African American in a group of mostly white people who are quitting drinking? That is the topic today. One of my uh, Project 90 members. Uh, by the name of Mark Davis, reached out to me proactively and suggested that we speak on this very topic. It didn't just come into my mind as I was sleeping one night. Uh, Mark Davis is, uh, is 46. He's a non-profit business consultant, and he is a minister for the Redemptive Life Christian Fellowship, Fellowship, I should say, which is a non-denomination Christian church. And Mark is an African-American He's on day 62 without alcohol, alcohol, so congratulations to Mark. That's amazing. And uh, most of my Project 90 members, and just for the uninitiated, Project 90 is the, uh, the group of people who are getting coaching and accountability and having fun around quitting drinking for 90 consecutive days. It's the program I've had since 2018. Mark joined 63 days ago. He's now on day 62 without alcohol and we're going to dig into his story in, in a little bit and just find out what his drinking was before the program and how it's going uh, at the moment but as I said Mark is the only African-American participant at the moment and Mark wanted to discuss that and talk about that and he thought this would be super valuable for uh, our listeners on the podcast and for viewers on the YouTube channel Mark Davis it's great to have you here how are you sir I'm doing well James it's great to be had and uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to join you in this podcast. Thanks for having me. Of course. And congratulations on day 62. Just tell us before we get into this topic, what your drinking journey has been up until this point. Well, um, as, as with many people, um, you know, it's process, you know, whether you start college partying beers and all this stuff, postgraduate, you become a professional as you and most Project mem- Project 90 members know, it becomes uh, not, a, not an American norm, a societal norm, uh, whether it's uh, colleagues after work, whether it's dinner parties, or whether it's the guys getting together. A lot of our customs uh, and traditions internationally, it's not just American thing, it's not just a black or white thing, they're surrounded by alcohol. And for me, as you mature, age, wisdom, things like that, um, is not that you just recognize that there's there's something deep down inside in your in your spirit and your gut that says I could be a little bit better without this, and that's what led me to your program. That curiosity to know deep down inside, I'm not at my best. I'm okay. Nothing's wrong. But why why would I not want to be my best? And so that's why I reached out to you. I saw some, you know, some uh, exchanges with you on YouTube. We exchanged a few emails. And I remember where I was sitting at that Saturday when I emailed you back. I think you'd emailed emailed you back. I said, let's do it. Mentally, emotionally, I was locked in at that moment because as you and many other uh, Project uh, 90 members know, um, it's like, where does a person, where does a guy like me fit in? You're not an alcoholic. You're, you're, you're not. You know, you're not out doing anything, beating your spouse or anything, but it's like, you know, I don't feel great in the mornings. Um, even this as ministers, right? And as ministers or pastors, or people of the church is like, people drink, you human, but there's this thing for me, I can only speak for me, there's this thing deep down inside, getting up in the mornings consecutively, whether it's a night, two glasses of wine or three or four or the whole bottle. Um, and it's safe. It's practically normal, right? It's normal because you do these things in the comfort of your own home and you're not hurting anyone. You're still productive. You have a job. You make a quote unquote high income. But for me, and like many of, a, of the other Project 90 members that I have uh, resonated with, there's something really deep in your gut that says there's more. There's more physically <laughs> because you can't you can't you can't drink a bottle of wine every night for you know, 50 years and, and, you know, keep a clean slate of health. So that's one as I'm physically aging. And two is for me, um, I'll be honest with you. I had to be accountable to myself as a minister, honestly. And many, I, I was, I was not being accountable to myself and therefore 
through being accountable to the word of God. You know, even as I joined James, you've probably seen a lot of videos that I've done. And it's amazing how the scripture hits you in the face. Even as a minister, it, t- it talks about alcohol and the responsibility of it. And, you know, from Proverbs to, um, you know, Proverbs is a great one, for example, when it talks about the responsibility of wine as a marker, strong drink as a brawler. And, um, <laughs> and then, you know, one, one, one funny story uh, in Proverbs, the end of it, and uh, I won't take all the time to talk about the Bible here, but it basically talks about in Proverbs 31, the king's mother is talking about what kings do. She's talking to her son. If you're going to be a king, this is what it looks like. And basically the piece with alcohol, she says, kings don't drink because they leave it for the common people to nourish their hard times, their ailments and things like that. But you as a king, as a man, it's not for you. And so, and so, so I, I, when I thought about that, I said, I, for me, that analogy was not literally being a king. It was more or less being the best I can be, the leader God called me to be, the leader who I am, the best that Mark Davis can be. Simple as that. And without judging, pointing fingers at others, but just saying, I knew this was a, a thing that I wanted to get into so I could be my best. Yeah, wonderful. And now you're day 62. And uh, you mentioned before that sometimes we, we lose count of what day we're on because it's, it, at some point it ceases to matter. But just out of note, you're 62 days into the program. What were you drinking before you joined, by the way? Like what was your drink or what were your drinks of choice? Chardonnay. Chardonnay. <laughs> Chardonnay, my family, my friends. That's, that's, I give me a chill Chardonnay and, and I'm good. And again, you know, these things are what we call normal, but uh, the consistency and and sometimes in excess, whether it's in your own home or whatever, you know, I felt even though I was under the umbrella of normal uh, for me and where I want to go in life, it was in excess. Yeah, got it. Well, congratulations on your success so far. And we'll come back to the Thank drinking you. part in a second. I wanted okay. to uh, shift the conversation what we, uh, you and I had, had decided that we were going to talk about here, which was the fact that okay. uh, at the moment you're the only African-American, and you actually did, did educate me before we started here, that it was okay for me to say the only person of color or the only black guy, uh, that the most um, politically correct or most formal reference is only African-American. Uh, so thank you, thank you for that. And, and you wanted to just point that out. Um, and so what is it that you wanted to share or what do you think is worthy of discussion about that so um and again as we we talked uh prior to joining live the the thing is for african americans in this case or any minorities I'm, i can guarantee there's a certain percentage to send your youtube uh videos or the scene of things on facebook and when they look they're saying I don't want to be the first one or there's nobody that looks like me, whether you're male or female. And so that's often a, there, there. There's often a hesitation uh, to join whatever group, this Project 90 or whatever, whether it's a civic organization or a social organization. There's oftentimes the hesitation because there's a there's a fear that uh, your culture and your identity won't be embraced. And there's just a fear of being the only black person. And and I thought this video would opportunity to to talk with you, James, is would be important because um, there are so many people, African-Americans, just like myself, who can benefit from this program. That's what it's all about. It's not about, you know, the percentage or numbers is that there's people out there just like me who can benefit from this program. And, you know, I want to say do it because really the group um, is just a diversity of people. And I love it. And, you know, a lot oftentimes that's the fear of coming into uh, a program and you're the only one. And it's like, what do I do? Especially if you haven't had experiences, whether it's corporate, again, whether it's recreational, civic, socially. If you haven't had a whole lot of exposure 
to interacting and being in groups uh, with a lot of non-African Americans, there's oftentimes a reservation and a hesitation to join. And I wanna help remove that barrier, the possible barrier by encouraging African Americans because for people like myself, just to liberate, just to say, what do you want in life? And where do you wanna go? And this project will help you as every person, regardless of uh, ethnicity has, has said about your program. Great, thank you, Mark. When you were looking at maybe some of my promo promotional videos for Project 90 around quitting drinking, maybe you were reading some emails, or you're looking at photos, before and after photos of, of some members, what was going through your mind as an African-American man as you were watching a lot of the videos and the testimonials and things like that? Were you like literally looking for another African-American person? Were you noticing that most people were not of color? What, like, what was the story that was going on in your mind at that point? That's a good question. Actually, not at all. And that it didn't happen until probably after a few weeks. I didn't even think about it because I was uh, very selfishly focused at the time. I was trying to get what I what Mark Davis needed to get. And uh, when I saw what you offered, I said, I think this is it for me. And I knowing what I know and I felt like having something to have some skin in the game would be a difference maker and like minded people, whether it's entrepreneurs or what we call, quote unquote, higher income earners, uh, people who are trying to get to a certain place, uh, increase whether it's sales, revenue for the individual. Uh, uh, entrepreneurships or just flat out have the creative clarity that most of us have uh, celebrated through um, being alcohol free for a certain period or periods of time. And so for me, I was going in totally selfishly just saying, this guy can help me. Yes, let's do it. And so I didn't, it, it was all about what I could gain. And I was just laser focused in that way at first. And so then I began to think about I know it's a black guy just like me that's here in Georgia or California or wherever, right? Or who knows? And I understand the hesitation. I don't often have that hesitation because I'm a go-getter. I feel like it's nothing stops me but me. But the reality of the fact is that minorities often, in this case, African-American, don't feel as comfortable saying, I, I don't want to be the first one. And sometimes people literally say this, like, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I'm not going to that party. I don't want to be the only black guy. Seriously. And th this, these are conversations now that the world is pretty much saying the lid is off. Let's talk about whatever. And let's talk about things that we're not so comfortable with. And that historically that we have, to, we haven't been comfortable saying as African-Americans. And I think, I thought this was a good opportunity to, um, to bring that to light. And, and again, it's not to say everybody should love me and recognize me as the only African-American. That's not it at all. This is just the opportunity for other African-Americans to say, uh, step out there, be comfortable, insert yourself and just be who you are. <laughs> and so for me, um, knowing it, but I'm just going to be the best me, love it or leave it. You mentioned something before where you said uh, when you got into Project 90, you realized that there was a diversity of people. Uh, will you just clarify that, just to, to just elaborate on that? Um, diversity meaning geographical locations, meaning people who are, um, you know, very young professionals, I want to say probably late 20s, uh, that, are, that are doing quite well for themselves, seemingly. Uh, you know, I don't have everybody's birth dates, but up into some of the group members have shared 60s and set 69 as, as you know, some of the members that you've interviewed have shared. So it's a broad spectrum of individuals, male and female, but from much different backgrounds. And I thought that was valuable because, you know, whether a person on their horse ranch um, out in the Northwest sharing, um, there's a certain bond that you begin to gain and you appreciate the individual's uh, challenges that they share, but their perspective also. And as I mentioned to you previously, so there's a lot of uh, indirect learning and takeaways that oftentimes without saying anything in, in the group meetings and um, 
Yeah, so I thought that was very valuable. So having that diversity and oftentimes um, seeing other people's growth, their strength, was has been very valuable for me. Has anyone brought up the fact that you are African-American at all? Has that been any point of conversation on any of the group calls that you've been on? Or have you proactively brought it up on any of the the, the many group calls that are, are available to members? No, and I'll be honest with you, in my, my gut feeling, and I, I have a pretty keen sense of um, people, I don't think it's been an issue. I don't think anybody cares, really, and which is good. Um, but I think, and from my experience, everyone, every part of group call I've been has valued my perspective and has, you know, appreciated some of the things I've been able to offer the group as far as, you know, my experience, perspective, or just an um, inspirational word for another member, uh, just like many have given to me when I've had some challenges that I've gone through or shared with the group. So, Yeah. And uh, I wanted to ask you about the uh, Black Lives Matter um, movement uh, that, that started, in, I guess, in June, late May, June of 2020. Uh, what were your thoughts around that around that whole thing as an African American man watching on with all the worldwide protests and the uh, the very like huge viral uh, Black Lives Matter um, yeah. hashtag and movement and, and and symbol? What what were your thoughts on that as you were watching on? Good question. The reality, the, the reality of the matter is, is, is it's been an eye opener. I won't say an eye opener, an opportunity, if you pay attention to the eye opening facts that what African-Americans, I can only speak from, from my living only in the U.S., experience in this country. Um, if I go to a certain place driving a certain vehicle and I can have on sweats, I may be treated very differently than I walk into a boardroom with my suit and tie on and I have, I have tons of degrees. <laughs> and so uh, simply because of the color of my skin. And so the initiative um, started from just a simple uh, a, a fairness perspective, whether it's, whether it's a fairness of the law, um, you know, part of my, part of my challenge uh, to, uh, to the universe, not only to our country, but to to extend this into the boardrooms also, James, because that's that's something that's African Americans experience, um, you, you know, uh, discrimination uh, sometimes in this, the unwritten rules and uh, systematic ways of, of of not being a, a part of uh, different opportunities. And so, for me, it's been very valuable um, because. Percentage wise, we know African-American men in particular, which I am. I only have daughters, but I have nephews and my heart bleeds because uh, many of these folks look like me. And, you know, the, the reality of it is, 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 it, is it, it, it makes you very not afraid, but it's the sobering reality that your life, no matter I look at myself, no matter how much I contribute, whether it's through the kingdom of God whether my love for just people, period, black, white, everybody, is like my personal life may not be valued the same as yours or another individual's simply because the ignorance of the amount of melanin in our skin. And that's something that I think needs further education, but I think the awareness, and I've talked to many of my good friends who are Caucasian to call me, text me, to check on me, say, what can I do? And some of them uh, said, I just, I really haven't felt it. You know, as a friend, I didn't feel the things that you you are afraid of. I, I, you know, I just never felt that. I never had that fear or the reservation when police get behind you and your heart beats uh, because you're a certain gender and a certain ethnic group. And, but those are the realities. And the good thing is, the good news is that this awareness, people are marching, protesting nonviolently, black, white, brown, uh, however you want to put it. And I think 
we're we're realizing, I won't say I think, I see that we're realizing just as a humanity, we're better than this. You know, we're better than this. And I think our our world right now is so intellectual. It's it's beyond the fact that this this is old news. This is not 50 years ago. This is not 50 years ago, Alabama. This is the real business world. This is the international business world that we live in. And because a person looks differently, um, it's pretty absurd, actually. It's pretty ignorant. And so although we know these things exist and they stem from traditions and environments and communities, but it's it's great to see that the conversations and the marches are happening. But um, we still got some work to do. And so I'm I'm really excited, although I'm I've I've been very hurt when I see I live in Georgia, you know what happened recently here earlier this year in our state. And you know, it's, it's quite it's quite ironic because one time probably 15 years ago, maybe less, 10 or 15 years ago, I was running at night and um, someone threw a bottle at me and, um, you know, and it was a Caucasian person and said a few things and I was just jogging and it probably missed my head by a few inches. You know, I got a knot on the back of my shoulder, but it was just, I'm just, just because I don't like this guy. I don't know him, I'm jogging. And, and so, so I could have jogged at night, but it just reminded me of people could just hate someone that they don't know because they're out jogging. And so these these things are absurd, but uh, the reality of the, the matter for right now is people, you still have to be safe. You still got to protect yourself. But in the future, 10 years, 20, 50 years from now, as the, the world emerges and becomes even more intelligent and really understand what it's about, especially, you know, I have seen very few people in my life uh, especially when they become elderly or ill, that race matters to the person who can save them or, 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 or help them to become healthy. And so when we start to look at things through those lens or when you, when you think about what is the end of my life going to look like, do I want to really live with hating a person that much? Uh, whether that's not only racial gender, but uh, even whether it's uh, sexual preference or you know, gender, it's, this is just absurd now. This is 2020. And it's just, it's just, it's just time for the world to just kind of wake up. And I personally think from a spiritual perspective, God is saying, I'm just stopping everything for everyone to just reset, refocus and pay attention on what's important. And we have the opportunity to do that. What have you identified is important to you in these last say 62 days that you've been alcohol free what was your intention when you when you enrolled uh with me inside of my program and how has that been going and maybe just contextualize it a little bit by maybe sharing a little bit about your life and your family and how you became a uh a minister uh, i'd just love to know a little bit more <laughs> about you and what your your motivation was for for going on this path oh wow uh so um I'm one of those ministers that, you know, I didn't have the squeaky clean background. It's like I'm I'm that guy with the checkered past who's uh party lot, been every every bar in the city almost and been out there. But, you know, for me, I give credit to 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 God for just giving me the opportunity to kind of wake up. And so Project 90, I said it to Kevin, who's an awesome counselor. Um I, I said it because it's like my eyes have been opened and 46 years, you know, a couple decades of drinking, whether it's, you know, social party, whatever, whatever. But it's like when you separate yourself from something, you know, some people, it could be drugs or it could be alcohol. It could be some any other addiction. Right. It could be shopping. When you remove and separate yourself from it, you begin to begin to really see and value things. Um, more differently. And so, and part of the sobering reality, as I was sharing with the group recently, of being sober is that things things look very differently once you once you open your eyes. And sometimes that can hurt our feelings because we may have friends or something like that that they may only want to be drinking buddies, right? And it could be some of those people that may be holding us back from from the true our true destiny, I feel like. 
And so for me, um, again, a person with a checkered past um, saying at this juncture in my life, I want more, not only professionally. And I think what's been really showing up for me is the fact that like, you're kind of mad because it's like, if I had this clarity like 10 years ago, man, I would have been killing it. But you realize uh, in my, per- from my own thought, my belief is that it's on God's timing, right? I'm not 76. And so there's still so many things that I can do, I will do, I can accomplish. And the creativity, because my mind is really clear, has been flooding me. And so I do feel this, it's a healthy pressure of like all these projects that have come to me from being in a creative space. And that's been awesome. And when you're drinking, you literally are besides the besides the 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 money spent piece of it, you're lo- literally losing. And I really start paying attention. You know this as well as other Project 90 members. You're really exchanging uh, a loss for a gain. So you're comfortable. You're buzzed for a couple of hours. OK, that's you know, relaxed. That's what we call it. Right. We want to have a couple of glasses of wine to relax. But the reality of it is, is you're going to lose productivity. I don't care what you say. I've tried and done it. Say, I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to do that. And you kind of just say, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. And you write it down and it still doesn't happen. And next thing you know, it's two months that's gone by. But you, so you're exchanging productivity for lack of productivity. And just from a simple equation standpoint, if you switch that time, say, okay, I, I, I didn't have the couple glasses of wine. I'm going to, whether it's uh, finish proofing my book before I send it to the editor this week, for example. And you get that done and it's like, wow, I've been saying, honestly, I told Kevin when I first started with this, I said, I told you this. I said, I want to get my book off. Right. And so, man, I've gotten this thing off to the editor, but that probably realistically wouldn't have happened for another six months because I was saying, yeah, I need to do it. I need to do it. And we've late, we wasted so much time. You've lost the productivity. And then the productivity, you know this as well as I do, there's not a mathematical formula for this. It's almost like it's almost like giving, right? Take it from a Christian perspective or a biblical perspective. There's no mathematic formula. If you do, if you buy into the system, great things come. I say I said this to a group before. When you free your mind of these things, it's almost like God or the universe says, because you've done this, I'll just reward you openly. And so for me, it's the it's the you said it before. So it's like. It's hard to explain to someone It's like it's not about how much you spend on per day or per week on alcohol. It's like you don't know it until your mind is free and clear that these creative ideas are going to help my business. It's going to this book will sell. It'll profit whatever amount of money. It, it is not even about the profit. It's about just using my raw, deep down talents. And so for me, it's like getting that stuff out there. And most people in this group I've experienced is really not about just about I want my business to grow. It's about the creativity. So they feel so they feel like they're in alignment with what they're supposed to be doing with who they are, like naturally. And that's really amazing. And that's the thing that you can't write this formula down. You know, it's, it's times I'll be honest with you. I've been frustrated but I've checked the box. I'm like, I don't feel like being on this freaking call today. It's Friday. I'm tired. I'm getting on it because I committed to it. I'm going to do it. James said do X, Y, Z. And, and, you know, after the call, it's like, man, I was, I really gained a lot, you know, and it's like your attitude is shifted and, but you're motivated. And it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not a formula you can package and put together, but if you work it, in my opinion, our universal God says, I will just reward you by by removing yourself from something that's so common and it just opens it just opens doors up for you. And so it's hard to say until you get into it, especially someone like me who um, or like myself and many others who feel pretty articulate, feel pretty competent, capable and and feel pretty, um, you know, pretty good self-esteem. But it's like it takes you to that next level, you know? And I love sports. I use a lot of sports analysis. It's just like, you see these athletes. I'm a big Kobe fan, rest in peace, Kobe. 
but it's like Kobe was that guy. He's the first person at practice and he's the last. And it's like all these guys are pros. They're going to show up to practice. But it's like that's what separated him because of that extra boost. There's just that little extra. And for for me, I wanted the same thing. I wanted what is that extra that can keep me? You say six out of 10. You know, I was probably coasting, making over 120 grand, probably coasting at 55. Seriously maybe 60 percent and i'm not saying it to brag but i'm saying from a common sense perspective i looked at it i said damn if i could do 90 percent 85 i'd be killing it seriously and so one has to think what is what is the difference between that let's say 60 and 85 90 and what 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 is preventing me from being at that 90 you know a hundred is a hard sale. People say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm every day. I'm giving a hundred percent. I know for me, that's probably not going to happen. It's not a hundred percent every day. Uh, you know, whether it's this week, holiday week, and I may kind of fade off early Thursday and not work on Friday. But the reality of it is, even if we commit to 90%, that's killing it more than most. And so I looked at it again, from a simplistic standpoint, what is it stopping me from being at 90? Is it alcohol? Is it is it not this and that and the other? So when I started adding these things that are part of the program, OK, we removed alcohol. OK, cool. All right. We increased water. OK. All right. I was doing ice cream for a minute. OK, so I stopped that. <laughs> I went from ice cream to not ice cream, smoking cigars, not smoking cigars. All right. It's like now, Mark, OK, get your butt in the gym and be and like detox and all this stuff. And so it's a process for people. Right. It's like you don't go from here to here and it's like you're killing it 100 percent. And so. Uh, for me, that's not been my experience. And some of us joke in, in the group calls is like, you know, some of us are hung up on Diet Coke for a period of time, whatever. Right. But we we talk through it. We learn through it. And but it's like you you realize through these uh, challenges, group therapy meetings and conversations. What are the things that are, you notice know holding back most alcohol, but you identify other sources that is holding you back and you identify the resources that can help you to get to, let's say, that 90%. And I think that's the valuable thing because you can just say, you can not drink and sit at home and never do anything forever. But it's all about, for me, is what do you want out of life? And so that was like the, the foundation for me for joining. And the question uh, before God led me to this program is like, what do you want, honestly? And I didn't want to be that respectfully i didn't want to be that old guy that looked back and said damn man i gave i gave a lot of money and the time to to alcohol and you know i could have did this this and the other if i just like stopped or really cut it out most of the time i cut back i won't sit here and say i'll never have a drink ever again i just don't put that pressure on myself but i don't pressure myself to say I want to get out, go ahead and get buzzed. I don't. So, man, I'm really loving where God has placed me right now. And I'm willing to ride on that. For, I'm really, I'm, I'm going to ride that way for now because I've not been on that wave and I know what it's like. And so whether it's 90 days or 120, keep it going. I just want to keep going, feeling this way. Mark Davis. 46 from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you so much for suggesting we have this talk today. You're very Mr. welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. It means a lot to me, James. I appreciate you. I really appreciate you. You you're a man of your word. And and for anybody who does watch this, um, you walk the walk, you talk the talk, but you walk the walk too. And I appreciate that, man. Thank you, Mark. So appreciative of you. Uh, congratulations on day 62. I'm sure by the time this comes out, you'll be rocking and rolling. Uh, either towards or just past day 90, and long may it continue, sir. So good health to you. Thank you. <clears throat> may good health to you, and uh, and thank you for sharing your time and and uh, for guiding us through what many might you know deem to be a delicate subject. But I think it was. I didn't feel like there was it was delicate at all. I didn't feel like it needed that. I felt like it was just very smooth and easy. And uh, yeah. And uh, you know, I so appreciate you giving us your your insight on that. You're welcome. And I took your advice. I hit the sauna today, man, the wet sauna, and I feel awesome. <laughs> <laughs> great work. Keep up the great work, Mark. Okay. 
Thank you so much for listening. I have some free stuff for you. If you go to jameswanick.com forward slash guide, I will send you my formula for reducing or quitting alcohol. If you'd like to watch the video versions of these episodes, then you can watch them at my YouTube channel, which is at James Swanick. If you'd like to send me a direct message on Instagram, you can do so at James Swanick. If you would like to try a three-day challenge, a free three-day challenge, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash three-day challenge. If you would like to try the 30-day no alcohol challenge, you can go to 30-day no alcohol challenge. If you would like to schedule a 15-minute exploratory call with one of my coaches to see how we may be able to help you in your alcohol-free journey, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash schedule. And my request is, if indeed you enjoyed this episode or you have enjoyed the podcast, would you please go ahead and rate the show in iTunes and would you please write a review? A review might just be a sentence saying, great, listen, hey, this was fantastic. Oh, I really enjoyed this. Whenever you give a rating, whenever you write a review, it surges our podcast up in the rankings, enabling more people to see it and hear it and potentially inspiring someone out there to reduce or quit alcohol and potentially transform their life. So yes, while it does help me to get ratings and to get reviews, you will actually be directly contributing to helping someone's life by having them discover this podcast. So if you are open to inspiring others and to helping me in the process, would you please go ahead and give this episode a ranking and would you please write a review? Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you on the next one.